Fifty years ago in this nation, nobody, nobody would have had the guts to ever blaspheme the name of God by having a quote-unquote church that not only supported, but condoned and glorified the sin of homosexuality. Now, littering the landscape of this nation all throughout the country, you have quote-unquote churches who proclaim to be followers of Jesus Christ. Yet they spit in the very face of God. They mock this very book that God wrote by condoning, supporting, and yes, even glorifying the sin of homosexuality. Matter of fact, right here in the Tampa Bay area, we have several churches on both sides of the bay that are quote-unquote gay churches. Talk about a misnomer. We'll talk about gay churches tonight on this edition of Live Prayer. What problems are you dealing with in your life right now? Do you feel like giving up? Times are hard and you're not strong. I know the answer for you. There are answers. Welcome to Live Prayer. It's waiting there for you. Here's your host, Bill Kelly. You can make it through. There is a hope Welcome to Live Prayer. I'm Bill Keller. I'm so glad you're with me on this Wednesday night, Thursday morning as we're turning the corner on another week. Welcome to the program tonight as we will take a look at a subject. I hate to say it. Nobody's got the guts to talk about. One of the reasons these abominations even exist is because true followers of Christ shut their mouths for so long. Well, tonight we're going to talk about these quote-unquote gay churches. Take your phone calls. It promises to be a good hour, and I'm glad you've tuned in. Welcome to everyone watching all throughout the greater Tampa Bay area. Right here on CW44, the exclusive home for over four years now of this program, Live Prayer, where we come to you live and in living color every Monday through Friday from 1 to 2 in the morning. I want to welcome you to the program tonight. I also want to say a very special hello to all my dear friends watching around the nation and many foreign lands who watch this program so faithfully via our live simulcast on liveprayer.com. Welcome to you folks as well promises to be a good evening tonight as each night is let me just share with you tomorrow night's one of those special nights where we call it viewer choice where you get to call up and talk about anything you want so we'll be that'll be tomorrow night's program then friday night does god exist i get the emails every night why do you waste your time talking about a god who doesn't exist does god really exist we'll talk about that tomorrow night Monday night is a program you do not want to miss. Monday night I'm going to be dealing with Republican presidential candidate Mitt Romney. Not even Romney as much as the many evangelical leaders who are coming out in support of this man. Matter of fact, Pat Robertson just last weekend actually had Romney preach the commencement message at his Regents University. I will submit to you tonight that anyone who votes for Mitt Romney is voting for Satan himself. And you're going to have to tune in Monday night to hear why. So do not miss this program Monday night. As a matter of fact, I just got through dealing with my PR people uh, for several hours today and I've got a very uh, major editorial release that's hitting all the press wires tomorrow. Friday, Friday's devotional will be dedicated to this issue. Monday night's TV program will be dedicated to this issue. Uh, you, need to, you need to tune in Monday night 
Read the devotional Friday. You need This is a very important message people need to hear. And I'll say it once again. The lead of the editorial, the lead of the press release, the lead of the devotional, the lead of the program Monday night. I'll tell you what the lead is right now. A vote for Romney is a vote for Satan himself. So don't miss this program. So we got lots coming up, coming up on this program, and as we do every night. One of the reasons so many people watch this program is because they hear things on this program that, peop- that other people on television don't have the guts to say. They get the truth behind the issues of the day. They get the truth that they need to hold on to, to just go through their own lives. So I'm glad you've tuned in tonight, I really am. Of course, I'm Bill Keller. I'm the founder of Live Prayer. Live Prayer is the world's largest interactive Christian website. We reach a little over 2.4 million people every day via the Internet. I'd encourage you next time you go online, if you've never been to Live Prayer, to come visit us. www.liveprayeroneword.com is the web address. When you go to the website, you'll find very easy to navigate links there to take you all around the website, help you find everything you need. Everything on there is free. Got the daily devotional I just mentioned. I write it every morning, have for over eight years now. We've got the, each day's devotional on the website. There's an audio version that I record on the website. Also, I have a devotional archive with all the devotionals for eight years in a very wonderful database that's searchable by keyword, by date, by topic. We have our show archives. That's where you'll find the past five TV programs available for on-demand viewing. Unique content on liveprayer.com, unlike any website that exists. None. There's no Christian website that has the type of unique daily content that we have. None. So come visit us. When you're there, of course, I know everybody's struggling with something in their life at all times. Hit that prayer request link. Type in your prayer request, send it off. We read and pray over every prayer request. We respond back to every prayer request. Be happy to stand in agreement with you and help you through those difficult times in life. That's why I'm here. As a matter of fact, let me just give you that email address now. That way you can jot it down if you need uh, to communicate with me in any way. This is how you can do it. Keller at liveprayer.com. Keller at liveprayer.com. And again, I'll be happy to help you any way I can. All right? Praise God. Let me just mention real quick, I think, uh, I think I heard in the office today there might be 20 tickets left to the May 25th event. Um, you know, I thought we were probably going to have tickets all the way through the end, but uh, I guess there's only about 20, 20-some 20 left. So if you want to come, there's an 800 number on the screen. You've heard about it now for several weeks. Uh, it's going to be a... A sold out house. Uh, you do it is free, but you do need a ticket to get in. You're not going to get in without a ticket. So uh, if you want to come, call the 800 number. You better get on it now. I think what they're going to be doing once the last tickets are gone, they'll just start taking a waiting list. And if we get any tickets returned to us, then we can start calling people on the waiting list. But it's going to be a great event. Uh, Friday night, May 25th. That's Memorial Day weekend, two weeks from Friday. It's called an interactive evening of faith. It's a special live musical, video, oral production about the issues of life. Very unique. We'll have a, I've got a full camera crew there that, that night that's going to film everything in really in preparation for editing it into a public broadcasting uh, special. It'll be on PBS. Uh, we've also... Uh, uh, I've got plans to take this production on the road into a different city each month, starting probably August. So you can be part of the inaugural production of an interactive evening of faith that's coming up at the Tampa Bay Performing Arts Center's Ferguson Hall this uh, May 25th. That's two weeks from Friday, 8 p.m. And again, we've got corporate sponsorship to underwrite all the costs. So the tickets are free, but you do need a ticket to get in. There's the 800 number, so get yours now because there's only a few left, okay? All right. When a church becomes a stench in the nostrils of God, you know, in the summer of 2004, and let me, let me, let me set the 
backdrop for why I'm dealing with this tonight. Talked about this issue several times over the years, but the reason I'm dealing with this tonight is back in the summer of 2004, the story began to surface that the New Jersey governor at that time, Jim McGreevy, was having an extramarital affair. And it came out his extramarital affair was with another man. As the details began to come out in the press, it was learned that McGreevy would spend his spare time trolling the truck stops in New Jersey, picking up men to have sex with. I guess being governor of New Jersey wasn't challenging enough. I guess he had a little extra time on his hands. So when he got those extra few moments, he would drive around the truck stops of New Jersey and pick up men to have sex with. Isn't that wonderful? In the wake of his sin coming to the light of day, as sin eventually does, McGreevy's sin cost him his governorship, his marriage, his relationship with his children. I just want to point out what I share with you often. When you choose to sin, there's always a high price to pay. McGreevy just resurfaced in the news this past week with the announcement that he was entering seminary to become an Episcopal priest. And that's why I'm dealing with this issue tonight, because it really begs the question, how can someone who chooses to practice the sin of homosexuality, something God calls from Genesis to Revelation an abomination, how can someone who chooses to, without shame and without repentance, commit that sin, become a pastor. Now, don't forget, the Episcopal Church is the same church that in 2003 elected Gene Robinson, a practicing homosexual, to become a bishop in that church. This is also the church that's now led by a woman named Catherine Jeffords Skiori who said last June that she believed homosexuality was no sin and homosexuals were created by God to love people the same gender. She also believes that there's many roads to God. That's the universalistic lie from the pits of hell itself. You know, back in November of 2003, at the time of the consecration of Gene Robinson as a bishop into the Episcopal Church. I stated at that time that the Episcopal Church was anathema. This is the church in Pergamum spoken of in Revelation 2.12. And I advised people at that time to leave that church because God's not going to be mocked by a church more worried about offending sinful men than God himself. God cannot and will not bless sin. The Episcopal Church and any other church that condones the sin of homosexuality is no better than the abominable metropolitan community churches that exist around this nation as a denomination of churches that promote, glorify, and take pride in the sin of homosexuality. Matter of fact, let me stop for a second. Back a couple years ago, one evening at the uh, one of the small venues in the Performing Arts Center, I debated uh, local pimp Joe Redner, homosexual rights a activist Nadine Smith, and the pastor, the quote-unquote pastor of the Tampa Metropolitan Community Church, a woman who believes the Bible's a book of fairy tales. Of course, you have to, to be able to be a quote-unquote pastor of a gay church. Tonight I renew my strong admonition to anyone who's part of the Episcopal Church or any church that condones this type of sin to leave immediately. This isn't a church of Jesus Christ. It's simply an empty shell void of God's Spirit. Like I said almost four years ago, that the Episcopal Church was anathema, dead based on choosing a woman who openly supports the sin of homosexuality to lead that church, how can anyone who loves the Lord stay and be part of such blasphemy? How can you be part of any church that quote, says they love the Lord but supports and condones such sin? If you're part of an Episcopal 
church or any church that remains under leadership that supports and condones such blatant sin, you have no choice but to leave immediately. Matter of fact, what would happen if you went to church on Sunday and they started telling you that adultery was okay? What would you do if they you went to church on Sunday and they said murder was okay? I think you would probably get up in the middle and leave, wouldn't you? So if condoning those sins is abhorrent to you, how can condoning a sin like homosexuality not be equally as abhorrent? Here's a great passage of Scripture. It says, although they knew, know God's righteous decree that those who do such things de deserve death, they not only continue to do these things, but also approve of them, approve of those who practice them. That comes out of Romans chapter 1, verse 32. You know, over the past nearly eight years of live prayer, the four plus years I've done this TV program, you know, I have refused to fall into the trap so many national ministries fall into, and that's simply bashing those who choose the sin of homosexuality as a sexual preference to incite people to give money. Can't do that on this program because I don't even ask you to give me any money on this program. I've clearly stated many times that homosexuality is a sin. That's not because I say so. That's because God says so. It's not even debatable. But tonight I want to speak out on these quote-unquote churches that support this deviant sexual choice or any denomination or ministerial organization that would even consider having someone who's chosen this as their sexual preference to be ordained into their fellowship. Let me say right up front, the Bible clearly teaches there's no division of sin. Sin is sin in God's eyes. The Bible teaches that to God all sin is equal. Those who commit the sin of homosexuality commit a sin no greater or no less than in someone who chooses to commit the sin of gossiping. Sin's a bright line. You're either on one side or the other, no matter what the, no matter what the name of the sin is. It's a choice. Sin's a choice. The two great lies of the pro-homosexual community are that homosexuality is some, something people are born with. The second great lie is 10% or more are homosexual. First, modern science has clearly rejected, totally been unable to even remotely prove anyone's born gay. It's a choice. People choose this behavior. Like all sin, once you do it long enough, it may seem natural, but it's still a choice. You're born black or white. You're born with blue eyes or green eyes. Taking your pants off to have sex is a choice. Also, all legitimate studies done by the non-homosexual community clearly show less than 1% of the population will ever engage in this type of deviant sexual act. To have a church that accepts the sinful choice, to have a ministerial body that ordains people into the clergy who make this choice, you must reject the inspiration and inerrancy and the authority of God's Word. There's no difference in having a church that accepts those who make the choice to engage in homosexual behavior as having a church that would accept those who make the choice to commit adultery. I've said it often. I could fill Raymond James every, every Sunday with a church that promoted and glorified the sin of adultery. To have an institution represent God, to have people represent God who've clearly rejected God is an abomination. It makes me sick every time I hear of a quote-unquote church that accepts homosexuality as an, as an acceptable choice. Even more sick when I hear of a denomination or ministerial organization who accept people who blatantly, unrepentantly engage in this type of sexual behavior. Such a church is a stench in the nostrils of God. Listen, if your church or denomination is even debating such a non-debatable issue, you should be very concerned. There's nothing to debate. But like I say often, the, the voice of sin in our culture is virtually unopposed in trying to get people to accept their view as correct. The Bible is our ultimate authority in all matters. The Bible clearly says that God condemns this choice of homosexual behavior calls it a sin, calls it an abomination. You either believe God or you reject God. The choice is that simple. 
It's that simple. Can those who choose to engage in this type of behavior get to heaven? Absolutely. If they repent, ask God's forgiveness, and through His power turn from their sin. Just like anyone who chooses to commit any sin, murder, adultery, whatever sin. If you truly repent, turn from your sin, turn to God, ask Him to forgive you, He will. Because you see, it's your faith in Jesus Christ that saves you. But if you choose Jesus as your Savior, how can you continue to engage in blatant, sinful activity? How can you blatantly sin against the God you proclaim to love? Jesus said, if you love me, you'll obey me not live in rebellion to me. So to wrap this message up tonight, let me just say this. I'm fully aware that we've got churches, even here in the Tampa Bay area, that accept, condone, glorify, support, promote this sin. They're not fit to be called churches. Those who lead them aren't fit to be called pastors. They're an abomination to God. They're a stench in His nostril. And it just shows you how far our culture has fallen spiritually. Because like I said, 50 years ago, nobody would even even have the guts to even think of such an abominable, abominable thing as having a gay church. But you see, the Bible's no longer our authority. When I was in that debate that, with that pastor of the gay church, the Metropolitan Community Church in Tampa, First thing I asked her, first thing I asked her, was, do you believe the Bible is God's inspired and errant word, representing absolute truth, our final authority in all matters? Of course I knew the answer, no. How could she? It's a good book. It's a good book of thoughts and ideas on how to live. No, my friend, it is the only truth that exists. Those who follow God's word will be blessed. Those who live in rebellion to God's word will be cursed because there's always consequences for sin. All right, let's go to the phones. Phone number's coming up on the screen, 727-576-7884. 727-576-7884, that's my number. I... Want them to clear, clear the lines and let's pick up a slate. And I have no doubt tonight that the phone lines are probably going to be burning up. But that's okay. And if you're out there tonight, maybe you go to the Metropolitan Community Church. Maybe you're part of one of those gay churches. Maybe you're part of a church. I know there's some Presbyterian churches, some Lutheran churches, some Methodist churches, some other types of churches. Like I said, the Episcopal Church that condones this type of sin. Maybe you go to one of those churches. Love to talk to you. Love to talk to you. How you could sit in a pew knowing that the church you're part of condones blatant sin. Love to hear some clergy people call tonight. A pastor at church that accepts it. I love to hear you try to defend how you can claim to be a spokesman of God, a preacher of the gospel, a caretaker of the truth of God's word, and yet allow, condone, support, glorify such blatant sin. So if you're out there tonight, love to hear from you. 727-576-7884. That's my number. Again, I know this is one of those issues that generates lots of, lots of fervor, and that's okay. But if you'd like to try to defend, I'd love to hear from you tonight if you're out there and you are in, engaging in this type of sin. You've chosen to commit this sin. And yet at the same time, you call yourself a follower of Christ. I'd love to talk to you how you can reconcile those two. How you can reconcile calling yourself a follower of Christ and yet 
literally spit in his face every time you choose to engage in sexual relations with someone of the own se- of the of your own sex. Jesus didn't say if you love me do whatever you want. Jesus said if you love me obey me. Not live in rebellion to me. So give me a call 7275767884. I look forward to hearing from you tonight. I'm sure it's going to be an interesting evening. Let's start with Chrissy in Oldsmar. Hi, Chrissy. Hi, how are you, Bill? Doing good. How can I help you tonight? I just wanted to thank you. I started watching your show actually when uh, years ago when I lived in Clearwater. I'm originally from New York. Okay. And I tell my whole family that all live up north to uh, you know, check you out via online or whatever. There you go. And my, my whole family's all Christian and we Good. agree that you're you're not born gay. That would be like saying I was born a child molester. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. But exactly. I, yeah. <laughs> yep. Um yeah, my I was I was baptized of state a catch Catskill Christian Assembly and I've been through a lot of trials and tribulations. Right. I had cancer and um, I, I was just hoping that you, you could pray for my son who's in jail right now. He's sure. He's 19, and my daughter, uh, who's wonderful, she's uh, 12, and she went to the b- baptism class at Countryside. Amen, uh, yeah. Yeah, and, but my car broke down, and oh. we don't have a way to get there now, so I'm just praying that, that possibly someone from there or where I live over here, because uh, we're, we're close there, could get us back over there. Sure. So, well, I, you know. I'd suggest call the church office because I know they've got a lot of carpools and going back and forth. Yeah, and I've, I've been in contact with good, them. Good. Good. Now, how long's your son down for? Um, he he's been getting in trouble for years. Mm. He was diagnosed with an attention deficit, and he was in sure. juvie and. Uh, what, from, what 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 kind of time is he serving? Oh, I, I don't I don't know. Him and his girlfriend had a fight. He's 19 now, so he was living with her, and they mm-hmm. had a fight, and she cut his face, and he uh, she pressed charges, and he didn't. I see. So, so, he's, so he's oh, okay, so, he's so, so, so he's <laughs> so so he's probably not looking at a lot of time. It's a domestic issue. Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, let's so. pray that through this time that God will really speak to his heart and. God will send the right people to speak to him, and, and it'll, it'll be a time of real revelation for your son. Yes. Amen. What's his first name? Jet, J-E-T-T. You have, you have prayed for him yep. before, and I my remember. daughter, Lacey. I, I remember. Let me pray, Chrissy. God bless you, dear. Thank you. Father, I lift up Chrissy and her family tonight. I thank you, O oh God, that you are a God of changed hearts and changed lives. I pray for Jet tonight. I pray, God, that as he's dealing with this, legal issue. You'll send the right people to come speak to him and talk to him. And Lord, they'll bring words of life into him. And he will come to a place of ultimate surrender. The prayers of his mother and many others will be answered and he'll truly surrender his heart and life to Jesus. And you can transform him and change him. And he can look back 10, 15 years from now and be thankful for this experience because it was the catalyst turn his heart and life to Jesus. So be with him. Be with Chrissy and her her daughter. Meet their needs, God. I pray you'll open the right doors for people that are going back and forth the countryside to make that transportation possible and just meet their transportation needs as well. So I pray for this family. I pray blessings upon them. And I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Bless you, Chrissy. Thank you. Let's go to uh, Don in Sarasota. Hello, Don. Bill. Yes, sir. Um, today, well, today is, of course, Thursday, but uh, yesterday in the Sarasota Herald uh, Tribune, mm-hmm. an article uh, from Fort Lauderdale, I'd like to just uh, mention uh, and see what you think about this. Okay. Um, this guy is uh, a young man, Jethro. Uh, I, I'm not sure I can say this right. Menestrine, he's 23, who okay. worked for the Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport. Yep, I, I know the I know the story. The guy that went on the loudspeaker, <laughs> yeah. and, and got fired. Yes, he got fired over a Bible uh, yep. verse. Yeah. Uh, what is this country coming to? Yep. We it just enlighten us a little bit about that, uh, brother. I appreciate you calling. You know, 
He got on the he got on the loudspeaker, and he literally did nothing but quote a verse out of Leviticus that calls homosexuality an abomination, and he got fired. Okay. Now, should he have gotten on the loudspeaker, probably in an unauthorized fashion? No, probably not. Was it worth losing his job over? Obviously not. But in the climate today, you can't you can't speak. Let me tell you something. I just dealt with this last week. I've been telling people in my daily devotional for eight years now, I've been telling people on this TV program that there's coming a day very soon in this nation where the message I preach tonight will put me in jail. Literally. You think I'm kidding? You know, people used to laugh at me eight years ago when I said that. People used to laugh at me when I came on this TV program four years ago and said that. Well, I would be put in jail right now in Sweden and many other European countries for just saying what I've said tonight. I said enough tonight to be incarcerated because what I said tonight would be considered hate speech. In other words, simply telling the truth, preaching from the Bible itself is now considered hate speech when you preach against the sin of homosexuality. That's true in Canada. They're trying to pass hate crime legislation in this country. And it's not been successful, but don't worry, it will be one day. And incorporated in that hate crime legislation will be speech itself. So it's coming. It's coming. That guy lost his job. I'm not going to be silent, but I guarantee you one day, very soon, just saying what I've said tonight will be enough to put me in jail. They'll be waiting for me when the when the cameras turn off and uh, be going down to Pinellas County and have to bond out at 3 in the morning. Um, th- those days are coming, Don. And you know what? We have nobody to blame but ourselves because we sat back and we said nothing for you. Matter of fact, we don't say nothing now. You can't even turn on Christian TV. Yeah, let me tell you something. I'm just going to be honest with you. You know, those guys are so gutless. They won't even, they won't even preach to the choir the truth. You, you tell me how many times you've heard a message like this, even on Christian TV. You don't. You're never going to hear it on secular TV. But yet, they can put in prime time two men kissing, they can promote the sin of homosexuality all they want. And you know what? That's perfectly fine. Take the other side of that issue, and it's called hate speech. That's where we're at. Let's go to Patrell in Tampa. Hello, Patrell. Hello. Hi there. How can I help you tonight? Yes. Um, I was just listening to your show, and yes. I have a question. Fire away. Can you tell me in the Bible where it says that homosexual is a sin? Absolutely. Thank you for calling. And I really appreciate you. I appreciate you calling tonight. And what I would like you to do, my email address is on the screen. Email me at bkellertliveprayer.com. And I will send you the complete list of all the scriptures from Leviticus all the way through the New Testament. And please, please, don't anybody fall into the ignorant trap. I'll I'll save you from looking foolish right now. Don't call me up and say, well, I know it's in Leviticus, but Leviticus also says don't eat shellfish. Please, please, don't make yourself look so stupid by saying that, okay? Because the sin of homosexuality is also spoken of all throughout the New Testament as well. Matter of fact, go to Romans chapter 1. Matter of fact, Patrol, go to Romans chapter 1 right now and start about the 20th verse and read through. I mean, you don't, I mean, you don't have to read much more than that, but it's in Galatians. It's in, it's in Ephesians. It's all throughout the New Testament. Of Timothy. It's all throughout the New Testament as well. But you email me. Anybody wants those scriptures, email me. I'll be happy to send them to you. It goes all the way from the book of uh, Genesis all the way through the book of Revelation. And let me clear up one other misconception. People say, well, Jesus never said anything about homosexuality. Oh, really? Really? That's funny because Jesus spoke of marriage quite often. 
Marriage is between a man and a woman. That's never even been an issue until people in today's society has tried to pervert that holy institution. Jesus also spoke of sin, sex outside of marriage being a sin. Well, that would include any sex outside of marriage. Jesus also spoke of the precious Word of God. And the precious Word of God calls this act a sin. Appreciate you calling, Patrell. Email me. Happy to get all those scriptures to you. Let's go to Mike in Tampa. Hello, Mike. Hello, Mike. Okay. I guess Mike was the was the uh, real wise guy who was going to call up and uh, mention Leviticus. So say, at least saved him the trouble. Let's go to Chris in St. Pete. Hi, Chris. Pastor Bill? Yes, sir. Hello. Um, I watch your show, and uh, most of the time I like it. Good. Um, I'm a heterosexual, and I, I don't think that I chose to be a heterosexual. You don't have to choose to be normal, my friend. That's how God made you. And um, You don't have to choose to be normal. Okay. And as far as the gay churches and a lot of other churches, not all, of course, but mm -hmm. God Incorporated is pretty big business, so the leaders of those churches may not want to have anything to do with God. They just want the money. You're right. I agree. There, I, I, I firmly agree with that statement that a lot of what's driving some of these, especially these specialized gay churches that are just reaching out to the community, they're just filling a market niche. You're right. I think you're right on the money. Um, yep. You said um, being heterosexual wasn't my choice. You don't have to choose to be normal, my friend. That's how God created you. You have to choose to be abnormal. You don't have to choose to be normal. Okay. Um, if, like, if we tried to convert a gay person to heterosexuality, first of all, wouldn't, for, it, wouldn't for, it be just as difficult? No, to... no, no. First of all, they're not gay. That's what you don't understand. Nobody's born gay. They're born normal. Okay. They choose to commit this deviant act. Now. Can somebody who's engaged in these deviant acts go back to being normal? Absolutely. It happens every day. We help hundreds of men and women every day through our ministry who are engaged in this deviant sexual act. Okay. Well, thanks a lot. I like your show. Okay, Chris. God bless you. Appreciate you calling. Those are all very valid because I hear that one all the time. Well, when did you choose to be hetero? You don't have to choose to be normal. That's how God created you. The choice is to be abnormal. Hello? Let's go to Sylvia, Newport Ritchie. Hello, Sylvia. Um, I need some prayer for... I married my husband's in jail, and um, he's addicted to crack cocaine. Mm. My mother-in-law enables him, and she goes to church, but she also condones his adulterous... He has adulterous affairs with other women, and she condones that and you know yeah. I'm angry but I gave it to God sure I don't know if I should stay in this marriage because it's like it's hindering my walk with God actually yeah well how long is he in jail for um I really don't know because it's misdemeanors but still yeah. um well Sylvia here's what I would recommend if he's if he's having affairs if he's involved in crack I would counsel you tonight to separate from this man. I didn't say divorce. Separate. Put him on the altar. And he's going to have to make a decision whether he wants to be married and make his vows stand or what he wants to do. Because at this point in time, you got to realize you're not responsible for these decisions he's making. Right. You are not responsible for these decisions he's making. You are responsible to pray for him and to believe God for, for, for him to turn. And you need to take your stand for your marriage. But in a situation like this, you need to be separated because you need, you've, got, you've got to live your life as well. And I'm not saying divorce or anything like that, but I am saying that you've at least got to be able to live in an environment that's not crushing you every day. And Great. So I, w I will pray for you, and it's a big step. But in the meantime, stand firm for your marriage. Believe God to change his heart because that's what it's going to take. And God can do it. 
What would you do about my mother-in-law? I mean, she goes to church pray, and she knows better. Pray, pray for her because obviously she's so blinded by, you know, and I understand she loves her son. That's natural. But, you know, she's not helping the situation by supporting his sin. Exactly. And that kind of truly hurts me because sure, of course. I've always honored her. Yep. And, and all you can do is pray for her because she's got to come to a place to realize that she's not helping her son by condoning his sin at all. So okay, let, me, let, me, let me pray for you, Sylvia. God bless you, dear. Father, be at this dear woman tonight as she goes through these challenges. I pray for this husband who definitely needs a change of heart. God, uh, just a transformation. That's only going to happen if you'll make a commitment to the Lord. So I pray for him tonight. I pray, God, that you'll bring healing and restoration to this marriage. And that's only going to happen when this husband turns to Jesus and turns from his sin and embraces the vows that he made to this woman and to you for life. So be with Sylvia. Strengthen her, protect her, guide her. Be with her in a special way as she takes her stand tonight for her marriage. And we believe God tonight for this husband's heart to be changed and his life to be transformed by the power of God. We believe it and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Thank you, Sylvia. We'll be praying for you. Let's go to Bobby in Tampa. Hello, Bobby. Hey, how are you doing? Good, sir. How can I help you tonight? I would like to talk to Bill Keller. You've, you're, you're talking to him. You're on the air. How can I help you? I'm on the air. Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to a, a lot of uh, bad health problem. Are you there? Yes, sir. You're all cracking all up. Um, I'm a hepatitis C positive. And, um, Did you get that they, through, drug, through drug addiction? Uh, from from past drug addiction. Yeah. But uh, no, I'm clean now. Good. And I just got baptized, and Good I've given uh, and uh, and I'm, I've given my soul my 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 life is into Jesus. I, I there I've given my life to their hands. Well, Bobby, let me pray for you tonight, my friend. Appreciate you calling. Let me pray for God's healing in your body because let me tell you something. God re- God's not only redeemed you, but He's He's given you your life back so you can be a blessing to others. And he's got things for you to do. Father, be with Bobby tonight. I lift this dear brother up to you. I pray for total and complete healing in his body. God, you are the great physician. And I know tonight you can take this hepatitis C from this man. Clean, clean him up. Make him whole for the glory of God. Use his life as a living testimony of your power and your might. Your transforming grace. So be with him tonight. Bless him. We ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Thank you, Bobby. We'll be praying for you, my friend. Let's go to Zach and St. Pete. Hi, Zach. How's it going? Good, sir. How can I help you tonight? I was just giving you a call. Well, I'm glad you gave me a call, buddy. How can I help you? I was just giving you a call to tell you, like, my father is an alcoholic. Okay. Are you, are you are you an alcoholic too? No, sir. Okay, good. It, it's it's. Well, I was just gonna say I was gonna say if your dad is one, you got to be very careful around alcohol because it'd be real easy for you to slip into that too. Oh, he's a stepdad. Okay, I got you. But um, he tries and he tries. He's been on medicines. Right. Uh, he, he something in in his head won't let him stop. Where, where is he at spiritually? Does he go to church at all? No. Uh, his idea of his church was, you know, going to the Going cookout. to the bar? Yeah, bars, <laughs> yeah. all that. Well, yeah. we need to pray. For, I appreciate you calling, Zach. We need to pray for his salvation tonight because I'll tell you, the only way he's going to be delivered from this bondage he's in is to turn his life to the Lord because he needs a strength bigger than he is. And that can only come from God. Father, be with Zach's stepfather tonight. We lift him up to you. Lord, I know that the only answer for him, the only answer for his addiction to alcohol is a relationship with Jesus Christ. So I pray tonight, God, that you will be with this man, that you will touch him, and that you will just speak to his heart and he'll answer and he'll turn his life to you. And in so doing, Find complete deliverance from his bondage and find his life again. So be with him. 
I lift him up to you tonight. I pray for Zach. I pray for this family tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll be praying, my friend. Let's go to George in Clearwater. Hello, George. How you doing, Bill? Doing good, sir. How can I help you? Well, I, first of all, I'd like to pray for all those people that call you up and try to prank you all the time. I apologize about that. It Do- doesn't bother me at all. Matter of fact, I love it when they do it because that means they're watching and that means God already won because they've heard the Word of God. Yes, yeah, thank you. And uh, you're a cocksucker. Yeah. Well, George, I appreciate you watching because, again, I'm sure you're probably not going to be sitting in a church on Sunday. And just to save yourself the trouble next time because... Obviously, your IQ is kind of on the low end. We have an eight-second delay. That way, people who say foolish things like you do don't get on the air. But appreciate you watching, though, because you're the exact reason I'm on the air. You're the exact person I'm trying to reach. And you know what? I did, because you're watching, and you're hearing truth tonight. So I appreciate you tuning in, my friend. Tell your friends about the program. Let's go to Mike and Tarpon. Hello, Mike. Hello, Mike. Yes, sir. Hey, how are you? Doing good, my friend. How can I help you? Oh, the, first of all, hey, um, amen on what you're saying tonight. Thank you. It's um, it's it's a truth, a hundred percent. Um, the last caller, hey, he doesn't know what he's missing. Well, he. You know what, though? I'll tell you what. I've, I, over the years, we've had a lot of those kind of guys that emailed me months later saying that they uh, came to know Jesus as their Savior. So, you, hey, know what the, you know what the Bible says. The Word won't return void. This is true. Yep. <clears throat> this how, is true. How can I help you tonight, Mike? Well, I do have one question for you. Okay. Um, what does the Bible say about mixed marriages? Good question. Thanks for calling. Second Corinthians 6.14 God commands not to be unequally yoked. Okay? What that is talking about is a believer and a non-believer in marriage. And it makes sense. Matter of fact, I've got to tell you, probably 75-80% of the marital issues I deal with every day a factor in each one of those is an unequally yoked situation when you've got a believing spouse and a non-believing spouse. And think about it. Your relationship with Christ is the most important thing there is. Most important thing there is. And if you can't share that with the most important person in your life, where's your foundation now? What is the foundation of your marriage? It's not your faith, because they don't have faith. See the problem? Now, God made all men cre- created equal. As a matter of fact, we just did this show last night on racism. All men are created equal in God's eyes. God isn't worried about white skin, black skin, yellow skin, brown skin. God's worried about your heart. Okay? Now, in the Old Testament, it talks about mixing the races. You've got to understand, though, what God's talking about isn't whites and blacks. He's talking about the children of Israel, the followers of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, mixing with the people, the heathen tribes that denied God. So what in essence, what he's saying, when he's talking about mixing the races in the Old Testament, he's not talking about mixing blacks. He's talking about what he's talking about in 2 Corinthians, unequally yoked. Okay? There's nothing God's word that says anything about a black and a white marrying, a Asian and a Hispanic marrying, a white and a Hispanic. Nothing at all. Because God isn't worried about your skin color or your ethnicity. He's worried about your heart. He's worried about where you are with Jesus. The only enter anything God forbids is those who know him with those who don't hope that helps you mike god bless you buddy let's go to sarah in st pete hi sarah hey bill how you doing tonight actually i'm doing really good but good. i'm going to tell you that my name's actually nicole oh, okay and i spoke to you a night last week and you hung up on me okay how can i help you 
I would like to know, first of all, you understand why you do have the people that watch you, like the gentleman you just said a minute ago, you know, was ignorant for his call, and you're glad that he was watching because you communicated sure. and got to him. Sure, be, sure, sure, because Nicole, what you, you, Nicole, you asked Nicole, for Nicole, these Nicole, emails. Nicole, no, Nicole, you know what? Nicole, what you didn't hear was what he said because we had to bleep it out. Now, go ahead. What, what's your question tonight? The question is, why can't you handle the people's truth that call you? Why what? do you have to hang up, and why can't What What you truth would you it? like to share with me tonight, Nicole? What what? What truth would you like to share with me tonight? Enlighten me. That the ratings that you have currently today are based on the fact that you're pure entertainment. Oh, good. Okay. Well, good. I mean, well, that's, well, it's just like Jerry Springer the other you, night when you said it. Beautiful. I about... Thanks. Off my feet. Thanks for watching tonight, Cole. Do you see how you compare? Thanks for watching tonight, Nicole. Let me tell you something. Here's what you don't understand because of your ignorance. The Bible says that God's word will not return void. And you know what? If, you, if, if you're watching for entertainment or whatever, that's fine. I don't care about your motives for watching. See, here's the difference. When you watch Jerry Springer, there's nothing there because there's no truth there. When you watch this program, guess what? You're hearing this, okay? Whether you understand it or not, and you obviously don't or you wouldn't have made such an ignorant statement, what you're hearing on this program every night, even though you're watching it for a quote-unquote entertainment value, what you're getting each night is the power of God's Word fed into your life. Seeds are being planted, okay? So... You can't even begin to equate what I do with what Jerry Springer does because the only, the only plane that there might be any common ground is whatever entertainment value there is. But the content is a thousand times different, worlds apart, light years apart, because his content is about debauchery. It's about glorifying sin. It's about destroying people's lives. See, what you don't understand, Nicole, is each night on this program, lives are transformed by the power of God. We've had tens of thousands of people commit their life to Jesus through this program. We've had millions of people over the years find hope in their time of need. They can't get that from me. I'm just a mere man. They get it from Jesus. So, in your sheer ignorance, which you don't understand, is that there's a power that exists in this program. And even the ignorant like yourself who watch it for other motives, you are being affected by the power of God, whether you realize it or not. So I appreciate you tuning in, and I hope you keep watching. I hope you tell all your, all your friends about the program. And whatever reason they, they want to watch, let them watch. Because I know the power of the Word of God will touch lives, whether they even realize it or not. God bless you. Jim in St. Pete. Hello, Jim. Good morning there, sir. Yes, Jim. How can I help you? Yes, sir. I hear a lot of people calling your show, but I can uh, honestly say what you're telling them is the truth. Because most of the things that you've told about uh I've been through, and that's because I wasn't with the Lord and walking and following with with Jesus and God. Right. That I got in, got myself into trouble, you know, believing what the world was feeding me. Sure. And uh, another thing is uh, to pass by everybody that's listening, and you too, Bill, is how come everybody makes a big fuss over a pedophile living next door to them, but if they got a gay couple living next door, and they, next door to them, they don't make any fuss about that. Yep. They say, oh, they're good people. Right. And uh, praise report is my leg is doing very good, Bill. Thank you good. so much for your prayer. Well, that's good. I appreciate your show, and I appreciate your ability to stand uh, just for God and Christ. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it. And good praise report. Glad your leg's doing better. Father, be with my friend tonight. I pray he'll continue to bring healing to his body. And God, open doors in his life to serve you. I know his heart is pure. You brought him through many things in life, and you brought him to this place so that he could be a witness for you. So open the right doors. Guide him. God, to a good local fellowship where he can be a true servant and really make an impact for you as he shares your goodness and your grace and your mercy in his life with others. So bless my friend tonight. Touch his life in Jesus' name. Amen.
You know, as we get ready to end the program tonight, I'm so glad Nicole called tonight, really, because here's the bottom line. For every Nicole and every other person watching tonight, let me lay a couple facts on you that unless you're just totally living in another world, you can't deny. One fact is that you're a sinner. The fact is we're all sinners. None of us are perfect. We all fall short of God's glory. Matter of fact, the Bible even says that. We all sin and fall short of God's glory. The other fact that nobody's going to deny, unless you're just living in la-la land, is that you're going to die one day. Here's the importance of those two facts. You see, it's your sin that separates you from God, your Creator. And at the moment you die, it's your sin that will send you to hell. God doesn't send anybody to hell. You have to choose to go there. You choose to sin. And you also make the choice to reject God's answer to your sin, a relationship with Jesus. And that's why when you take your last breath, you'll be cast into the fires of hell for all eternity. However, the good news is you can also choose to go back into a relationship with God through having a relationship with His Son, Jesus. Because it was Jesus who died for your sins. And by accepting Him into your heart and life, you can know without a shadow of a doubt when you take your last breath, your sins have been forgiven, you'll stand before God, and you'll be ushered into His presence for all eternity. If you're watching me tonight, you'd like to make that commitment. If you're watching me tonight and you'd like to have the assurance of your salvation, pray with me right now. Dear Jesus, I come to you tonight a sinner. I acknowledge my sins and I ask you to forgive me. I believe in my heart, I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Take my life that belongs to you now and forevermore. I will live for you. Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. If you prayed with me, if you meant it, those few words didn't save you. It's your faith that saved you. I've got a book I want to send you. It won't cost you anything. I'll even pay the postage. Just email me, bkeller at livefair.com. be happy to send it out to you. Just give me your name and address. Also, if you need prayer, email me. be happy to pray for you, help you any way I can. Listen, I love you. I care about you so much. Tomorrow night's program is going to be viewer's choice. You can call about anything you want. So it'll be an interesting program as those nights always are. Listen, you have a great day tomorrow. And I'll see you in 23 hours. God bless you.